We talked uh, about the 200,000 amps, but one thing that I do want to point out on this particular slide is this information down here at the bottom. And we'll talk about the power pack breaker first, in that when we have a eyeline breaker, um, the way that an eyeline breaker is identified in the catalog number with the power pack family is with the third alpha character. Notice that in that catalog number, the A identifies that it's an eyeline breaker. Whereas if the customer is ordering a standard conventional molded case breaker, that third alpha character is an L, which stands for lugs on both ends, cable in, cable out. This particular breaker, being an eyeline breaker, is cable in on this end, and then the eyeline shroud with the connectors that plug on to the eyeline bus stack on the other end. So the, that's the catalog numbering for the power pack family of breakers. If we look at the older legacy breakers, then you can see that we list the FA breakers. By legacy breakers, if you're familiar with the older FA, KA, LA, MA breakers, and you hear a lot of old time Square D people call them Fakalama breakers, FA, KA, LA, MA, you can see that again, in a conventional molded case, we have an L. The L identifies it as lugs on both ends, cable in, cable out. But in the legacy catalog number with an eyeline breaker, the third alpha character is actually omitted. So slightly different catalog numbering system between the old legacy breakers and the power pack family of breakers. And if we look at this photograph over here, and I, I put my arrow right there, everything from that point down is the same as a conventional molded case breaker. If this was a conventional molded case breaker that had an L as the third alpha character, about right where my arrow is pointing, would be lugs, just like we have down here on the bottom of this particular breaker. But if we come back to the arrow being positioned right here on an eyeline breaker, everything above that yellow arrow is that eyeline bus stack. So really, the internal mechanisms, the, the overcurrent protection, the operator mech, the trip mechanism, Everything internal to the breaker is identical from an eyeline to a standard molded case. The only thing that makes an eyeline breaker different is this eyeline shroud. And the question comes up quite a lot that if my customer has a conventional molded case breaker, can they add that eyeline shroud? Or if they have an eyeline breaker, can they remove that shroud? and change it to a conventional molded case breaker? And the answer is no. This is a factory connection only. That eyeline shroud, again, is a very intricate piece of equipment. So we only allow, uh, that is only uh, being connected at our factory. It cannot be field installed uh, by our customers. So let's talk about older eyeline panels for just a moment. And to kind of give you a history of eyeline, eyeline was designed in 1964, and it was released in early 1966. So we have been building eyeline panel boards for a long time. And over the course of the life of iLine, there's been three minor design changes to iLine. And what we're kind of talking about right here on this information is the most recent one. When we introduced the power pack family of breakers, they were slightly different than the old legacy breakers, and we made some minor design changes 
to the interiors of the I-line panel board. So relative to those old legacy breakers and the old legacy panel boards, there's a very large installed base of those panel boards out there in the marketplace. And so what this kind of is asking is if my customer has an old I-line panel board with old I-line breakers, can I replace them with new I-line breakers? Will it fit? And the answer is yes, but we need some information. If we drop down to the bullet items right in the middle of the page, if possible, get the panel board tight from the front. And I'm going to show you where you can get that information off of the nameplate of the panel board in just a second. Or get the factory order number off of that nameplate so technical support or our Peru, Indiana facility that builds panel boards can look back at their record, record drawings. If you can get us that information off the nameplate, that's really all we need. You're, you're golden at that point. But in many cases on older panel boards, the, the nameplate may not be there. An older panel board, the, the dead front may have been damaged and it's not even there. So in that case, then we drop down to can the customer measure the box width? Is it 26, 32, or 42 inches wide? Those were the dimensions of the old legacy panel boards. And then finally, is the bus stack center mounted left to right, or is it mounted off to one side? Is it off center? And to kind of go into a little more detail with those three bullet items, I've, I've got two different scenarios here. And, and I picked a NEMA 1 enclosure over on the left and a WP enclosure over on the right so you could easily see where that nameplate is located on both of those enclosure types, uh, which is the middle arrows. And if it is a merchandise panel board, it's going to have a catalog number. But if it's a factory assembled panel board, then it's going to have a factory order number on that nameplate. If you can get us either one of those pieces of information, that's going to tell us exactly what we need. But if you can also tell us, or you may need to tell us, what's the width down at the very bottom? Is it 26, 32, or 42? And then up at the top, in the top rectangle, it talks about a symmetrical bus stack, which is the photograph on the right-hand side, or is the bus stack off-centered like the photograph on the left-hand side? And, and both of these photographs are with the dead front installed, and the bus stack is behind that one vertical piece that both of those yellow arrows are pointing to. So if you can get us that information, most likely we will be able to replace one of those older I-line breakers with a new I-line breaker.